In just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the six-shooter, just one of the many great stars brought to you Sundays on NBC. Every Sunday, hear Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in The Marriage, Sir Lawrence Olivier on Theatre Royal, Lawrence Tibbet with the Golden Voices, Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Rex Harrison, and Lily Palmer on the NBC Star Playhouse. All of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the six-shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, its handle unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. The NBC radio network presents James Stewart as the six-shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the western territories leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. Meet the safe driver. If you know what makes him stay alive on the highways, you may be able to follow his good example. He always keeps his car in A1 mechanical condition. He shows courtesy for other drivers. He knows that speed is his greatest enemy. And most important, he knows and obeys the laws. Remember, few accidents happen with safe drivers. Are you one of them? Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. I hadn't seen Mary and Dan for pretty near three years, not since I left the panhandle. So I figured as long as I was riding up through the Platte River country, I might as well swing out of my way a piece and look in on them. Now, we'd been real good friends for a long time. It was kind of like going home. And the closer I got, the more I kept thinking back, remembering, kind of daydreaming. You know, riding across Prairie Flat sort of does that to you. Your horse, he kind of finds his own trail mostly, and you just slouch easy like in the saddle and listen to the hoof beats, study, regular. Things you haven't thought about for years sneak into your head. Anyhow, I, I still had a day to go, and I, I was watching out for a good spot to bed down when I saw this campfire up ahead. Well, the way I figure, human beings are always better company than coyotes, so I gave Scar a flick with the reins and headed up toward it. Whoa, be easy now, boy. There we are. Easy. Wow, well, howdy. Hiya. Uh, you, uh, you'd rather camp private? Well, climb down. Pour yourself some java. Well, thanks. Easy, boy. Whoa. Wait, that smells good. Yeah. You, uh, any notion about how far this Walnut Creek? Mm, 20 miles or so, right? That where you're going? Yeah, yeah, I stopped over there. A couple of friends there I haven't seen in quite a while. Uh-huh. Yeah, a fellow there I ain't seen for a while, neither. That's all. Uh, hey, by George, there's good coffee. Yeah, I've been hunting him for over three years. Finally located him. I'm gonna kill him. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, how come? Murdered my kid brother four years ago in Laredo. Shot him down in the street. Yeah. Well, another killing won't bring him back. Uh, nothing will bring him back. After I killed Dan Mailer, nothing will bring him back neither. Dan Mailer? That's right, Ponce. Huh? Yeah, I know who you was. As soon as you rode up to that fire and I got a look at that gun of yours. Britt Ponce. The fellow they call... A six-shooter. Well, you must have known I was a friend of Dan's. How come you told me all this? Well, I figure you'll warn him. And that's fine with me. I want him to know. Have time to get scared, you know. Maybe try to run away. I like it if he runs a while first. I'll catch up with him. You tell him that, Ponce. You tell him Red Lawson's coming to kill him. And there ain't nothing he can do about it. 
Thanks for the coffee. Easy, boy. Now, Lawson, I reckon Dan won't run. I'll be seeing you. Come on, boy. Come on. That's the trouble with the past. There wasn't only good things in it. It got some bad ones, too. And one of the bad ones was reaching out for Dan and Mary. I didn't know this fellow Lawson. I didn't know what he was talking about. But I did know Dan. And I knew if he'd killed somebody back there in Texas, it hadn't been murder. It was long about middle of forenoon when I rode up the dirt road between the rows of cottonwoods, turned into the yard. Old hound dog came charging around the side of the house, sounding a lot meaner than he looked. Oh, boy. Wolf star. Ah. Here now. Here now. Now quit it. Yeah, you don't want to bite anybody. Uh, ah, nice fella. Uh, go on. Tell him you got company. Go on, boy. Go on. Go on. The place had a good feel to it. Quiet. Peaceful. And then I remembered Lawson. Britt! Britt Thompson! Britt! Oh, I just can't believe it. Hiya, Mary. Yeah, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Uh, <laughs> Dan! Come on up and see who's here. Hurry! He's been working in the barn fixing up one of the plows. How are you? Yeah, you Britt? haven't changed a bit, Mary, unless you're a little prettier than Oh, you. oh you're oh, just... You're <laughs> Hi, Dan. Britt! Oh, good. Oh, you stayed away too long. Well, things came up, Dan. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. You, you're sure looking good, both of oh, you. Oh, feeling good, too. Settling down is what does it, Britt. Yeah, she took a good saddle man and turned him into a poor plowman. What do you think of that? That's not true, Dan. <laughs> We've got the best stand of corn west of the Omaha. What's really great, though, Britt, is peace. Peace? Mm-hmm. No more gunfighting, the range wars. Never knowing whether Dan would come home sitting up in his saddle or tied onto it. That's all in the past now. Why, Dan doesn't even wear a gun anymore. And that's the way I want it, Britt. It's the kind of life I want from... Oh, have we got a surprise for you. Oh, well, you, you know, I... Kind of hard to surprise, you know, you remember? <laughs> that's what you think. Come on inside. Now, don't you tell me, Dan. Oh, no. oh you'll see, uh, Britt. Let's see, let's see. What, could, could, one of those newfangled player pianos, is oh, that it? Oh, no, a piano. That's the most ridiculous guess I ever heard of. Well, it sure couldn't be anything that... that, that the... has... Hmm? Well, well, I'll be darned. Well, uh, well, well, I'll be... Well, I'll be doggone. It's a baby. It's a baby. Well... Which which kind is it, Mary? Not it. He. Hmm? That's oh. young Brit. He'll be a year and a half old next month. That name was Mary's idea, Brit. I sure wouldn't have wished it on him. Well, <laughs> well, well, I'll be doggone. Oh, he's all upset. Hasn't had his nap out. Brit, you'll have to look him over later. You and Dan go on outside now and let me quiet him down. Oh, sure, Mary. I can't have my namesake all upset. Are you hungry, Brit? Oh, you. I'm always hungry. You know that, Mary. Good. Got some buttermilk cornbread in the oven. Be ready in a minute. You know, Brit, Mary is right. This is a good life. I never thought I'd settle down and like it, but I sure have done it. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, uh, I guess Mary can't hear us out here, can she? No, she can't hear us. Why, what's the matter, Brit? I met a fellow on the trail last night, Dan. Name's Red Lawson. Lawson? Says you shot his brother in Laredo about four years ago. Lawson. Kurt Lawson. Yep. Yeah, I did, Britt. She was one of the Bracken gang, that bunch of rustlers that pulled an ambush on me when I was working for the Circle J Ranch. Well, I, I guess I better dig out the shooting irons and go after him. No, wait a minute, Dan. Wait nothing. He's probably holed up in town. The odds will be better if I go after him instead of waiting for him to come to me. Yeah, but what about Mary? Well, that's just it. If I catch him in town, it'll keep him from coming out here. And... What about her, Britt? What do you mean? Well, she's happy now, Dan. She figures this kind of thing is all over and done with. 
Well, she'll sure find out different if he comes out here gunning for me. Well, maybe he won't, though. Maybe, Dan, maybe I can do something. Britt, I've always fought my own battles. But you've got Mary now. You've got the baby. And you're a lot faster with a gun than I am. Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, Dan. I, there are just other answers besides killing, that's all. Or maybe we can find one. Anyway, we can try, can't we? I saddled up Scar a bit early the next morning and rode into town alone. Figured I'd have a talk with the sheriff. After all, this was his job when you come right down to it. Well, he wasn't in his office at the county jail. He was out of town for the next three days. So I walked down the main street trying to figure out what to do. I, this wasn't much of a town, Walnut Creek. It's a couple of blocks of clabbered buildings, boardwalk along the front of them, sheet iron awnings up over, and nothing much stirring but the dogs. Sleepy, quiet. Real nice and peaceful. For everybody except me. Fred! Huh? Oh. Oh. Mary. Oh. Come on out. Oh. Well, you were certainly an early bird this morning. Well, Mary, does Dan know you came into town by yourself? Well, I don't know, Britt. I come in alone every day or two. Why shouldn't I? Something wrong, Britt? No, no, no. I just wonder, that's all. Actually, I think he was too busy to notice I'd left. You know what he was doing? Cleaning his gun. You're a bad influence, Briss. Well, I... I think you've started him thinking about things... Well, with... Ponset, oh. how about it? You give him my message? What? Lawson. Mary, uh, I'll... I'll see you later, huh? Well, all right, Briss. Oh, now, there, there ain't no need of the lady. No. Uh, goodbye, Mary. I'll see you later, huh? Well, all right, Briss. If you say so. Giddy up. Come on. Come on. Mary, huh? Dan's wife, maybe. I hear he's got a kid, too. Yeah, maybe you hear too much, Lawson. And talk too much, too. Maybe you don't ride enough. Oh, I'll ride. When I'm through here. When I get even. Yeah, but Dan told me about that. Your brother tried to ambush him. He was in with the Bracken gang. That don't make no difference to me. He was my brother. Dan Mailer was in my place. He might feel the same way. Maybe I'll give him a chance to feel the same way. Now that I know he's got a wife, a kid. Now, Lawson, if you touch me or Yeah, yeah, I kid. know. I know a lot. But once I've done what I've come here to do, I don't care what happens afterwards. You, Dan Mailer, can make no move until I do. You see how it stacks up, Ponce? I got all the cards. And he turned his back and he walked off down the street and I stood there watching him go. Knowing he was right. He did have all the cards. There was only one thing in the world he wanted. Revenge. And he didn't care what it cost to get it. Even his life. Dan and I couldn't move first and afterwards it would be too late. <laughs> We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. When it's entertainment you're after, you'll find the very best on this station of the NBC radio network. Thursday night, for example, you'll hear Robert Young, Roy Rogers, Ralph Edwards, and Eddie Cantor, each with a great program for your listening pleasure. Robert Young on Father Knows Best, a program based on the assumption that the man of the family can put one over on the wife and youngsters. And Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards. When Ralph sends a contestant off on a consequence, it usually ends up as one of radio's funniest stunts. And if you like Western songs and adventures, you'll find none better than the ones you hear on the Roy Rogers Show. Then, to top it all off, hear the little-known stories of show business that Eddie Cantor tells on Show Business Show each Thursday on the NBC Radio Network. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. (laughs) 
I found Mary finally at the general store, and I stayed with her while she bought some things, and we headed back to the farm. Just like a woman, she was curious about the fellow I'd stopped to talk with, wondered why I hadn't introduced her. I had a real hard time stalling her off, but I managed to. With Dan, it was different. Are you in there, Dan? Yeah, come on in, Britt. Been cleaning my guns. I'll oh, forget it, Dan. There are better ways. Yeah? You got one figured? No. No, not yet. I saw Lawson in town a while ago, Dan. Oh. Uh-huh. You talked to him any? Yes, yes, I talked to him. I reckon you better stay close to Mary and the boy. Why? What do you mean? What do you mean, Britt? Did he say anything? No, not exactly. He saw Mary in town. Uh, what a dirty... Well, I didn't let him talk to her, Dan. She wondered about it, though. She'll probably ask you later. That settles it, then. I hadn't even thought of that side of it. Britt, I'm going after him. You wouldn't have a chance, Dan. You're selling me kind of short, ain't you? No, I, I don't mean it that way. A Lawson wouldn't draw even if you called him. That's not what he's after, don't you see? You'd have to kill him in cold blood, and I don't think you could do that, Dan. No, I couldn't. Not even Lawson. What are we going to do, Britt? Well, we waited and watched. The day passed. No sign of Lawson. Nothing happened. But instead of feeling easier, we just got more keyed up. Mary didn't seem to catch on. Anything was wrong. And then supper was over and the night started to come on and we just sat around talking while Mary got the baby off to sleep, singing to him and rocking him. The Katie did start chirping close. Way off toward the hills, the coyotes took up and answered them. Inside was sort of quiet and gentle. I think he's finally gripped it off. Yeah, yeah, he looks sound asleep. Just a look at him lying there. Completely helpless. And so lovable you could just eat him up. Well, I suppose he'll get himself some hair and teeth someday. Maybe look a little more human then. Dan, that's a fine way to talk about your own son. That's when I heard it. Sound outside. A horse stamped just one or two times. Like somebody was holding too tight a rein on him. Scar and Dan's stock were all in the corral. Over next to the barn. This was right up close to the house. I didn't let on to Mary or Dan. What's the matter, Britt? You getting rested? Hmm? No, no, I, I, uh, oh. Uh, it's too many years on the trail, I guess. I, uh, you know, I think maybe I'll amble outside. I get a little fresh air. Well, watch out for the coyotes, Britt. They grow them big around here. Dangerous, too. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep an eye on Coming out of the light that way, I was blind as a bat. I stopped on the porch, I... Waited a minute so I could get used to the dark. I stood there listening to the sounds coming out of the night. The Katie did. The coyotes. Then I heard it again. I moved around the corner of the house. It was all quiet. No sign of anybody. I drew fast and fired at the fire. Then I could hear a horse getting away. Rich! Rich, you all right? Yeah, Dan. I was lost. He got away. Heaven, were you trying to do? Are you all right, Mary? Small thanks to you if I am. That first shot didn't miss me or the baby by more than six inches. Well, I'm sorry, Mary. I Well, there was a coyote out there, and I, I didn't realize... Didn't realize? You fool. You might have killed us both, and you didn't realize. Stop it, Mary. Britt was... No, no, no. No, she's right, Dan. It's my fault. I just didn't think, that's all. Britt, I think you've worn a gun so long it's beginning to affect your mind. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Look, I, I uh... I think maybe I'll ride into town for a while, if nobody minds. I'm, I'm awful sorry, Mary. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, hmm? I ought to go with him, Mary. Why? After a fool trick like that, he ought to be alone. Nobody should be around him. It isn't safe to be. Oh, you don't understand, Mary. You just don't... Yeah. Well, let's go back in the house. Yeah. What? Let's all go back in. Dad. Lost. Why, why, you... Easy, Mailer. You see how it is. 
Gun ain't pointed at you. One crazy move and your wife will get it. All right. Let's all go inside. Go on, move. Storeroom over there? Mayor? Yes. All right. Get inside, both of you. I said get inside. Come on, Mary. Ah. I'd have to hold you. Huh? Stop. Close car. Whoa, boy. Hold up here. Oh. I could hear him up front. I could hear him. Uh, I've heard a lot of horses on the trail. Enough of them to know that this one had an empty saddle on him. I read Lawson hadn't left that farm at all. I get this. I'll try to get this door open. Rip! Where is he? There's nobody here, Dan. The baby! What? Where's the baby? I don't know. Dan! The Lawson was here. He waited for you to leave and locked us up. He kept coming over to the storeroom door telling us what he was going to do. He said he'd burn the house, all kinds of things. He couldn't have got away. He was here just a minute ago. But he has the baby. Rich! Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's got to come over here to the barn to get the horse. Huh? Grab your gun. Come on, Dan. Stay come here, on. Mary. Don't come out of the house. He's got the baby. This won't be easy. I know. I can't figure why he waited. He had all of us. I, I can't figure it. Yes, he's waited three years. He just wanted to enjoy it, that's all. All right, come on. We'd better separate. No use making it easy for him. Right, Bridge. Hold it. Right where you are. The moon came out from behind the cloud. I could see him now, standing right in the barn door, right in the open, like he wasn't afraid of anything. And then I saw why he wasn't afraid. He was holding a gun in his hand, not pointing it at us, though. It was aimed at a little bundle squirming on the hay behind him. I reckon you can see how things stand. One move and it's all over for the kid. All right, Mailer, drop your gun. I'm the one you're after, Lawson. All right, you got me. How about leaving Mary and the baby out of it? I killed your brother. They didn't. Hey, you'd miss him, though, wouldn't you? I guess you'd miss him real bad. Who are you? you... Hey, hey. Careful, Mick. Dan just stood there, helpless. Hands up in the air. The moon was out full now. I knew I could get a clear sight on Lawson, but I didn't dare to draw on fire. He'd still have time to jerk that trigger. The gun muzzle was about three inches from the baby's head. All right, Ponce. Move on over next to me. I want you both where I can see you. Go on, move. I walked over and stood beside Dan. Four years, Mayla. Four years I've been dreaming about this. Now it's even better than I thought. I didn't know you'd have a family. I didn't know I'd get the six-shooter along with you. It's our fight, Lawson. Why don't you leave the rest of them out of it? I had a brother once. Four for one makes a pretty fair payoff. I kept watching his gun. It was the only chance. If it swerved for one second, I'd make a play. But it didn't swerve. And the time was running out. And then... Then I caught something from the corner of my eye. Just the bare flicker of it. It was over in the... Over at the side of the house. It, it was Mary. I made my draw. Lawson! Here! Why, you... You dropped your brick. Now, make sure, Dan. I know we've got to make sure. Oh. Is that... 
sure enough for you? Yeah. Yeah, he's all right, Mary. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Mary, if anybody had told me that you could do what you just did, I... Here, now. I don't know. Even... You mean after the way I've always felt about guns? And after you tried to keep all this from me? Well, I... Dan told me all about it when we were locked in the storeroom. Oh, there, now, darling. It's all right now. Britt, I saw what was happening out here, and I remember the rifle, and... Well, after all, I... I mean, there was nothing else to do. All right, now, darling. All right. About three days later, I said goodbye. But I knew I'd be coming back that way someday. Dan and Mary aren't just the kind of friends a man forgets. Dan is a tough cowpoke from the range country, all settled down and liking it. And that Mary, she was gentle and sweet, and firing at a killer to save a baby's life. And that baby, you know, naming him Brett the way they'd done, you know, that, that, that gives you kind of a funny feeling having a baby named after you. It's kind of a good feeling. I, I, I figured I'd probably be telling the boys all about that when I got to Wyoming. The truce in Korea doesn't mean we should stop writing letters to our men and women in service. Mail from home is just as important now as it ever was. In some respects, it's even more important. The action, the strain, the anxieties of war can keep a soldier's mind occupied. But when the letdown comes, the time to relax, that's when morale needs a shot in the arm. Your soldier knows the shooting is over. He's done his big job, and now he wants to get home. But unfortunately, there's still a lot to keep him for a while. So don't let him down. Help keep up his morale. Write that letter today. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt. And today's transcribed story was written by Les Crutchfield. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture Thunder Bay. Others in the cast were Shirley Mitchell, Leon Ledoux, Paul Richards, and Barney Phillips. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam. And the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious. And any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Hal Gibney speaking. Thank you.